Mm. 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10. 20 out of 10. Five star review. 100. James Beard Award. <laughs> Come and give it a round of applause, everybody. Hey everyone, it's Jasmine. And Chris. Welcome back to another video. We are doing another episode of our Eating Around the World series today. And in this series, we highlight different cultures and cuisines, we explore different flavors, recipes, and we hopefully encourage you to do the same. Today we're making Indian food and we're gonna be collaborating with three amazing Indian content creators and I'm really excited. I'm a big fan of Indian food, so. Should be a lot of fun. We went to our local Indian market, actually a few yesterday, to gather all the ingredients. And what's exciting is we're using ingredients that we have never worked with before, so that'll be a lot of fun. Might be a little bit of a challenge, too, <laughs> so we'll see. Before we continue with this video, we wanted to give a quick shout out to our sponsor today, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. It's a great place to explore new skills, deepen your existing passions, and get lost in your creativity. The good thing about Skillshare is that it's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are never any ads, and they're also always adding new premium courses. If you're new to cooking, they have a knife skills class that goes over all the basics, and it's definitely helpful if you want to improve your skills in the kitchen. And another course that I'm loving is Real Productivity. I can always use some help in getting more productive, and this class covers all the bases. So if you want to check out Skillshare, we have a link in our description now, and the first 1,000 people to use the link will get one month free trial of Skillshare. So make sure you don't pass up on that offer, and let's get back into the video. All of the recipes that we are going to be using will be linked down below. And I guess let's just dive into the first recipe. So Divya, what are we making for breakfast? Hey everyone, I'm Divya. I'm from New Jersey. I'm a software engineer by day and in my free time, I love to cook. Being an Indian American, Indian food has really been such a great way for me to learn more about my culture, my background and where I come from. So a huge thank you to Jasmine and Chris for giving me the chance to share with you my favorite Indian breakfast food, aloo paratha. Aloo means potato and paratha means bread. So this dish is a bread that is stuffed with a spicy mashed potato. And the best part about it is that it's really versatile. So you can really have it for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, or even as a snack. And it's super easy to be made vegan. Usually it's served with a vegan yogurt or with a spiced Indian pickle. And this honestly is one of my favorite dishes. So I hope all of you guys love it and enjoy. So the first thing we're doing for this recipe is prepping our potatoes. Really simple, we just wash them, pop them into a pot with water, and we're going to boil them until they are cooked through. So as the potatoes boil, I am prepping the dough. And this is really easy. So first we're going to take some whole wheat flour, and I'm going to add that to a bowl, along with some water, oil, and a big pinch of salt. I'm going to use my clean hands to just mix that all together until it forms a nice dough. And then we're just going to knead that until the dough is smooth. We're going to set this aside to set for about 15 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to prep the filling. All right, the potatoes are boiled and they cooled a little just so they're easy to handle. And I'm just going to peel off the skin. Holy sh they are hot. Maybe not cool to handle. I'm gonna take my handy dandy potato masher and just mash these until they are nice and uniform. Next, we're gonna spice things up. So I'm gonna add some red chili powder, then I have some turmeric, amateur powder, which is dried mango powder, cumin, and some chopped cilantro. I'm gonna mix that together and then add some salt to taste. All right, next up, we're going to divide our potato mixture. I think I'm gonna do about six. I'm not entirely sure yet, but we're gonna find out together. And Divya said in her recipe that basically, the potato balls are supposed to be half the size of the dough balls, I believe. So that's what I'm gonna to try to accomplish here. And you wanna just make sure you pack the potato balls nice and tight. I'm going to divide the dough into six parts. All right, some of them might be bigger than the others, but we'll find out. We're also going to form these into balls. I'm gonna take my dough ball and we're going to roll it out on a floured work surface. I'm so excited for this recipe. I love me some potatoes. I love me some bread and this has the best of both worlds. I know Chris is gonna love this too, right Chris? Mm -hmm. All right, so this isn't a perfect circle, but you know, trying here. I'm popping my potato ball inside and what you're gonna... Call. What? Popping my potato ball inside and I'm going to basically wrap it up. I think I rolled it out too much. This is so cool. All right, so now we got dough filled with potato. And on my work surface again, I'm going to roll that out once more, gently, so that nothing spills out. And I'm just going to continue this with all of my dough and my potatoes. It's bad that my first thought was just to throw that in a deep fryer. 
That actually might be really, really good. And the last thing to do is cook these on an oil skillet until they are nice and golden on both sides. This looks amazing. Very delicious. I'm a little nervous because as you probably know, if you've been following us for a while, I am not good with spicy things. There was a lot of pepper that went into this, but I'm going to try it anyways because it smells delicious. And I didn't tone down the spice because I wanted to make this recipe as true to Divya's recipe as possible. So. We're gonna try it out. I also wanted to mention, I rolled out the dough too thin before I put the potato balls in it. I didn't realize at the time, um, but I did realize when they all kept ripping and I turned, it, I we only have two. We ended up with a mess of them, but all the ones that ripped, I still cooked them. We're still gonna eat them because I don't wanna waste this goodness. They just but didn't look as They crazy. didn't look great. And we're also pairing it with this mango pickle. This is my first time ever having this. Have you had this? No, it smells, it smells really spicy. Good. It does smell I don't spicy. Know. Someone messaged me on Instagram actually because I had posted this and they were like, I don't know if you're going to like the mango pickle, so we'll see. Here we go. I want to like it. I'm just not great with spicy things. I wish I was. Oh, wow. Is it mango? I mean, it says mango. Is it chunks? Mango, mango? chunks. Oh, wow. wow. It smells really good. You want some or? I'll have you try it first and then you tell me if it's okay. spicy. I'm going to try it on its own first. Wow. Hmm. Honestly, potato. Mm -hmm and bread, hmm. you can't go wrong. A little back end spice there. That's what I was gonna say. Ooh, it didn't taste spicy to start, but it is built into my mouth. And I think it definitely needs a topping. Is yeah, that? it'll help balance things. Oh wow, ooh. Spicy? A lot of flavor going on. Ooh, it's spicy. All right, I'm not trying it. It's not like, like. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like this a lot. I don't think we've ever ate made any authentic Indian recipes before. I don't think so. so. This is our first one. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Divya. This is more than I expected. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. So I will have all the links to Divya down below as well as her recipe. I highly recommend you check this out. 10 out of 10, thumbs up for me. Delish. Delish. Mm. Hi, Jasmine and Chris. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, my name is Nisha Balsara. I run a YouTube channel, Instagram, and now even a TikTok where I focus on flavorful vegan food and recipes and lifestyle and beauty. And a lot of my time and energy is spent recreating traditional family recipes and making them vegan and mostly just getting the accurate measurements to get something to taste exactly like it did in my childhood. Snacks are very important to me. I would love for y'all to try my chai and pakora recipes. They truly are two of my proudest recipes because they are just so spot on for like childhood at home. And chai and whatever snack you usually have is oftentimes shared with friends or in the afternoon for me when we go to India we have chai and either pakora or cocktail samosas and it really just symbolizes a coming together it's when you get with your friends or family you will always like bring chai and there's just so much love being shared and the key for that is hand grinding your spices sometimes i'll do it in a spice grinder but it's really having fresh spices ground up expressing the oils which have all these health benefits it tastes really flipping good <laughs> i hope you like them i cannot wait to see what y'all think we're making the chai right now and then we're gonna make the pakora after lunch just so we can space things out so let's make some chai with my mortar and pestle i'm going to grind all of the spices so we have some fennel seed some cloves black peppercorns, cinnamon sticks, and some cardamom. And we're just going to grind those up by hand. It does take a little elbow grease, but it is very satisfying. And like Nisha said, it makes for a delicious chai. So next up, we're going to transfer this to a high-speed blender, and we are going to continue pulverizing it there. So Nisha recommends using a dry container for this so that you don't scrape up your blender. I don't have one, and our spice grinder is a little too small, so... We're gonna see what happens, and if I scratch it up, you know, the chai was worth it. Oh, there you go, did you see that? <laughs> now we're gonna add some Assam tea, and we are just going to pulse this in. All right, I'm transferring that to a jar, and then I'm also going to add in some sugar as well, and I'm just gonna shake that all up and mix it until it is nice and uniform. So to my pot, I'm going to add in some water. And then I'm also going to add in some almond milk. And we're just going to bring this mixture to a boil. I'm gonna add some of the chai blend, and if you have some star anise, you can add that as well. And when it turns golden brown, I'm going to grate in some fresh ginger, remove that from heat, strain it, pour it into some cups, and serve. I realize there's a cord coming out of my armpit. Mmm. All right, this 
Smells amazing. Not only do we have some amazing chai, but we also have some, um, what's it called? Potpourri for our house. It smells Potpourri. so good in our house right now. So well, cheers. Cheers. Mm. That is so cozy. So herbaceous. So I will link Nisha's video with her recipe down below. I did use the half amount of sugar that she recommended. She recommended four to eight tablespoons. So I did four tablespoons and then for the tea, she recommended four to eight tablespoons and I also did four because of the caffeine. Um, but I really like how it turned out. It's not too sweet. If, obviously if you want it sweeter, you can add more sugar. But what I wanted to do was make it with less sugar and then when we're serving it, if any guests are enjoying it, if they wanted more sweetener, they can sweeten it to taste. So that's an upside of that as well. I really said herbaceous, but I should have said spice spacious. Spicacious. They aren't really. Spicacious. Spicacious. That should be a word. Should be. Don't think it is, though. Very good. Oh my Thank God, you, this Misha. is so good. This is our new go-to chai recipe. Lunch. I wanted to give y'all something that, to me, is just such a quintessential Indian lunch. It's something that when I'm in India, I see a lot of the time at street vendors. It's very much a street vendor food, but I would love for you to recreate it. Okay, this may be a hot take, but my favorite way to eat mashed potatoes is with butter, some cauliflower, peas, carrots, beets, and lots of spices. Okay, fine, they're not mashed potatoes. And if you don't know, I'm talking about bao bhaji, which is one of the most popular Indian street foods. And it is the poster child for ugly, delicious food. It's basically bread and a budgie, like a mixture of vegetables that you steam. It has lots of spices. You'll be trying my internet friend rooted in spices recipe. I think the biggest key and making it authentic, authentic, <laughs> authentic would be getting it off of the street in India. But I think the biggest key in getting the flavor is the pat of butter that you add to it. There are so many Indian recipes that are like optional, add a pat of butter. I mean, I even do it, but the pat of butter is essential. It just, it, as butter does, it sets the taste over the edge. But this recipe is from another creator called Rooted in Spice, so I will link her video down below. And it seems pretty straightforward. We are going to use the pressure cooker method that she uses in her video. But in the post, she also has an option for just using a regular pot as well. So let's get started. All right, so to my instant pot, I'm adding in some water. It's not recording. All right, so to my instant pot, I'm going to add in some water along with some potatoes, some cauliflower, some peas, carrots, some bell peppers, and then a gen oh, I spilled a generous pinch of salt. <laughs> I'm a little too excited. I'm going to just give that a quick little mix. We're just gonna pressure cook this until it's nice and soft. Now we are going to prepare the aromatics. So to my pan, I'm adding in some oil. Then I'm going to add in some red onions and saute that until they are nice and translucent. Then I'm adding in some ginger, garlic, some green chilies, and some salt to taste. Red chili powder, the pao bhaji masala, and we're going to cook that up for about a minute. Then I'm going to add in some tomatoes and cook that basically until they are soft and the smell of the spices goes away. The veggies are cooked. I'm taking a potato masher and I'm just going to mash everything together. In the recipe, she suggests using a masher and then going in with an immersion blender just to speed up the process. We have an immersion blender, so why not? Then I'm adding in the tomato mixture. And we're just going to mix this through and then we're going to saute this for a couple of minutes. I'm just gonna use a saute setting on our Instant Pot. All right, I'm adding in some vegan butter and then also some fresh lime juice. All right. This smells amazing. It smells really, really good. The whole house smells like this. When I was outside walking berry, I smelled like it. Oh, really? Yeah. Then we're adding in some cilantro. And then I also got the fenugreek leaves. These were optional. We found them at our local Indian market, so why not? They are very pungent. I've never cooked with the ingredient before. So we're gonna mix that through. Ooh, the butter's still not fully melted, so we're gonna get that to melt. Wow, and that's it. That was easy. So we didn't have any dinner rolls for this. All we had in the house were these sourdough slices and I didn't realize we needed dinner rolls for it until today when I was watching some videos and doing a little more research on how to serve it, how to eat it and all that. That is my bad, but next time we serve it, we'll definitely get some dinner rolls. So in the meantime, we're gonna use what we have, which is sourdough. I'm mm. nervous because spice. Ooh, mix that oh, in we'll there. See. Ooh, this we're looks gonna... so good. It's Ooh, Our hell house gonna... smells so delicious. Look at this, the butter mixing through. Good? Wow, delish. I could eat this every night. Oh my God. This is so, so good. Mm. Oh my God. I literally could eat oh this Oh my day. God. 
Well, this I is thought it was going to be spicier. Maybe it's because I'm eating it with bread. I think the butter too helps tone it down. Oh my goodness. Mm. Very good. Nisha, thank you for the suggestion on this. Oh my mm. gosh. I can get used to this. I, like you're saying, I could eat this every day. And this is so easy. Mm -hmm. Prep a big pot of this, have it throughout the week. We might have to start doing that. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, snack. Done. Anything. Dessert. Wow. Perfect. Come do it around the pot, everybody. The heat like it builds lingers. in my mouth. Yeah, yeah. It's very slight. As subtle. I'm eating, I don't feel it, but if like right now I stopped eating and it's like sitting on my tongue. But it's not like unbearably spicy. Mm -mm. Like the food earlier, it was spicy, but I was able to eat it. It wasn't killing me. I'm really bad with spice, so. 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10. 20 out of Five star review. 100. James Beard Award. <laughs> <laughs> Michelin stars. Has a Michelin star five. Is it five? Um, I have no idea. Whatever it is, this deserves that. Let's go make this right now. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so I know this video is eating Indian food for 24 hours, but unfortunately yesterday we weren't able to finish. We ran out of time and we didn't want to rush everything with the short amount of time that we had. So we are filming today to finish up the recipes. And we have two more amazing recipes coming up. The first one you saw Nisha talk about it for her snack recommendations. And I am really excited to try this. I have had these before, but I've never made them and I didn't realize how simple it was. So we are making pakora. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And um, we're gonna move over to the sink right now to prep our vegetables and get this started. So the first thing that I did was I chopped up my potatoes and my zucchini into matchsticks. And then I also sliced up my red onion and just separated the strands a bit. And I'm going to add all my vegetables to a colander. So next I'm going to sprinkle them with about a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna mix that all through. And this is going to help the vegetables sweat out some extra liquid. And we're going to let this sit here for about 15 minutes. I am transferring my vegetables into a clean kitchen towel. And we're just going to squeeze out all that liquid. Next up, I'm taking chickpea flour, also known as basan flour. And I'm going to put it into a sifter. Um, this is what Nisha did in her video. I'm going to sift it into a bowl. <laughs> Next, I'm transferring in my vegetables. Look at these potatoes. <laughs> They're all squiggly. Chris was, I was doing this earlier and Chris is like, do you remember the pencil trick? See, it's straight now, it's normal pencil and then. <sighs> there you go. Ooh, oh, wow. Oh, wow, magic. All right. Here you go, you're welcome. Next, I'm gonna add in some cumin seeds, some salt, and some garam masala, some chili powder, turmeric, ajwan seeds, and some ginger. She says to add one tablespoon of water at a time and then mix until we reach the consistency of her video. I'll link her video down below for you to watch while you make this recipe. Basically, we're just gonna form a batter with this. It's coming together. I'm gonna add two right now. Don't tell Nisha. <laughs> I don't know how many I added. I'll put it on the screen, do you know? I wasn't counting. I'll let my editor know, AKA myself. Next, I'm adding in some cilantro. You can also use parsley as well, depending on your preference. Nisha used parsley, but I really like cilantro, so we're using cilantro. We're gonna make sure our oil is hot enough, so we're just gonna, we are good to go. So we're just gonna add in little spoonfuls of our mixture. We wanna keep it pretty thin so it gets nice and crispy, as Nisha mentioned. Gorgeous. Beautiful. I'm really excited. Perfect. Wow, look at that. We're gonna fry our pakoras for about two to three minutes on each side or until they're golden. Then we'll remove them from the oil, add them to a plate lined with a paper towel, and then just sprinkle some salt over them right after they come off. Now we're ready to enjoy. It's pakora time, it's pakora time. I'm ready. <sighs> Me too. Fantastic. Delicious. Oh, sorry, my cousin's texting me. I think this is the one mm. food in this video that I've had before. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it's so good. Amazing. Nusha, very well done. Snack. Forget french fries, make pakora. I know. Mmm. So good. So good. 10 out of 10. I'm probably going to say that for every recipe. 11 out of 10, 5 out of 5. Michelin star, what did we say? Like James Beard Award. <laughs> 
This is so good. This is delicious. Definitely gonna make these again. Mm -hmm. All right, it is time for the last meal of the day and we have Priya of Spices and Spoons picking our meal. So Priya, what are we eating for our last meal? Hey everyone, I'm Priya. I'm the creator of Spices and Spoons. I run my blog mostly through Instagram. I also have a YouTube channel. My um, channel has a really good mix of Indian and non-Indian recipes. Most of them whole food, plant-based, organically vegan dishes that I grew up eating. I want to thank Chris and Jasmine for thinking of me and letting me pick one of my favorite South Indian recipes for them to try. Fingers crossed. I really hope they do like it. First up, we're going to toast our spices and we're going to do this in order of the spices that need the most toasting and the spices that need the least toasting. Priya has it written out beautifully and we are going to basically add them in in 30 second increments. So first up I'm going to add some cinnamon, cardamom and cloves. And then next I'm adding in some peppercorns. Then I have some red chilies and fennel seeds. Next up we have coriander seeds and white poppy seeds. And then lastly, I'm adding in some grated coconut. I'm going to turn off the heat as the coconut doesn't need much time toasting and the heat of the pan will help release the coconut's flavor and it'll smell delicious. All right, I transferred everything to my blender and now I have some cashews that I soaked in some hot water. I'm gonna add that into the blender along with the soaking water. And then I also have some chopped up cilantro, both the leaves and the stems, and we're gonna add that in as well. I'm gonna blend this until it forms a smooth paste. Priya noted that we don't want it to be a smoothie consistency, but we just have to blend it until there are no more large chunks because it will add a great texture to the dish. Next up are my spices. So I have a pan here, I'm going to add in some oil, and then to that I'm adding in some green chilies, ginger paste, and turmeric, and I'm going to just saute this for about a minute until everything toasts up. I'm adding in some diced red onions, and we're going to saute that until it is nice and translucent. I have some cauliflower, carrots, we have some green beans, some peas, and then some diced up potatoes, and also about a quarter teaspoon of salt. And we're just gonna cook that until all the vegetables are soft, and if needed, you can add some water to help with the cooking process. I'm adding in the green korma paste. This is so fragrant. It smells delicious. I was just, just gonna say it smells so good. Eh? Crystal's upstairs and he was walking downstairs like it smells so good in here. And I'm also going to be adding in half a cup of water and then some salt to taste. I'm actually just gonna add a big pinch right now and we'll taste it later and add a little bit more once I um, mix everything together. So we served it with some brown basmati rice and a little bit of extra cilantro on top. Priya did recommend pickled onions, but we didn't have any, so we're just gonna eat it like this. This is gonna be spicy. Are you ready? You try it first, I'm scared. There's a lot of peppers. Mmm, really good flavor. It's actually not that, mm, it lingers. It's like the others where it like. Okay. I'm gonna eat it with a big scoop of rice. How about that? Yeah, the rice helps neutralize it. Yeah? Mm. Very good though. Mm. That is spicy. I think it is spicier than the others. Mm -hmm. You're getting red. Oh my god, it's so spicy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So the initial bite was delicious, but then it's like, you know? Yeah. And now it's building and building. And building, it's like in the back of my throat. I like it though. I'm crying. <laughs> Maybe next time we'll only do two chili peppers. Yeah, I definitely think. Or one. The reason why, I mentioned this in the other recipe, I didn't want to cut down on the chili peppers because I wanted to make the recipe exactly how Priya sent it to me. And then if we do make this again, I'll cut down that spice for, for me, for my preference, but I wanted to make this authentic As, to her. Yeah. So um, we did that. I'm gonna still try to eat more because it's delicious. <laughs> I've never cooked with cardamom in a savory recipe before. I think I've only ever used it in Or cinnamon, beverages. right? So I really like that because it was a... Um, new flavor. New, yeah, to explore and it was a lot of fun prepping this. It was the sauce, the spice, and the vegetables. I loved how the flavors all like layered together and how there's a process to everything, especially like toasting the spices, how you needed to add it in a specific order. That was really cool. One thing I've noticed from all of these dishes is how spice forward they are. Mm -hmm. Like they all have a ton of flavor. In the best way. Yes. We definitely need to add more spice to our life. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. So I can eat this if I eat one vegetable at a time and a scoop of rice. So I found my method. There you go. Earlier I took a big hunk of it and that was too spicy for me, but 
Now I can actually taste it. Thank you so much, Priya. This is delicious. Yeah, thank you. This is oh, great. Let me, let me swallow this. <laughs> if you want to check out her recipe, all the info will be down below. And make sure you check her out on Instagram at Spices and Spoons. And she also has a YouTube channel as well. All of the content creators that we featured, all of their handles will be down below. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. We have a form down below as well if you want to nominate yourself or any other creators. We like to do these at least once a month and showcase different cuisines from all around the world. So if you have any recommendations for people or different cuisines to explore, comment down below yeah, and let, let us, us know. know. We have a few in the works already, but we are always welcome to your recommendations because we want you to love the content that we create. And these are always a lot of fun. So I'm definitely wanting to do more of these. And like Chris said, we want to do these each and every month. So yeah, thank you guys again. We love you and we'll see you soon. Bye.